Have you seen the new three yard quilt book from Fabric Cafe? Make it easy. And that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna make it easy and make a three yard quilt. Keep watching if you'd like to see how. The quilt pattern that I have picked out is Skyline. Let me show you. Since I have started making three yard quilts, when I go fabric shopping, that is the way I think. Three yard quilt. I try to find three coordinating fabrics. This is just now ingrained in my brain. When you make a three yard quilt using the Fabric Cafe methodology, you have fabric one, fabric two, and fabric three. Fabric one is your focus fabric, and this is mine. Fabric three is the darkest fabric. This is my fabric two. And when I looked at the pattern, I decided that I wanted my stripe to be fabric three. And as we go through making the quilt, we'll figure out if that was a good idea or a bad idea. Because you know, I'm all about breaking the rules. I try to follow them, but sometimes, you know, it's hard, it's really hard. I will follow the rules and not give you the measurements because I don't own this pattern. Let's cut. We need strips and that is the Fabric Cafe way. Lots of strips and the easiest way to get a quilt top done. So I'm going to cut just like they tell me, hopefully. That's the plan. I am breaking out my shape cut ruler because I need to cut out five of the same strip width. So this is gonna make that easier. Zero. One. Two. Three. Four, four, five. Fabric two. Fabric three. All our fabric has been cut. And a shape cut ruler, and you probably can't even see it. <laughs> now you can see it, is a great tool to use for these three yard quilts. Makes it easy when you have five cuts that are exactly the same, unless you're math challenged like me, you can just ch -ch 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 and cut them all up. Fabric one is from Joann's. Fabric two is my favorite basic gray grunge. And my fabric three is also from Joann's. So now I need to follow the instructions on how to assemble my fabric strips. So now we're first going to work on strip assembly A. And strip assembly A consists of fabric three and fabric one. So using one fabric one, one fabric three, and another fabric three, show as sewn. Show, <laughs> sew as shown. We're gonna put fabric three on either side of fabric one. Just a little note, 
I don't take the selvage off of these strips when I'm going to be sewing them together. I can cut the, the selvage off and then sew the strips together. I'm gonna have to straighten the end after I sew these strips together anyway. So I save a cut and maybe a little fabric. Strip assembly B is fabric two with fabric one on either side. Strip assembly C is a fabric two strip with fabric three on either side. I am actually ironing on the wrong side of the fabric. And you know what? That's the wrong way. I want to press to the dark side and I find that it's easier for me to actually iron on the opposite side. So I am setting that seam at the same time that I'm ironing or pressing, because I don't want to iron, I want to press, that I'm pressing my fabric. Now it is time to subcut my strip assemblies. So this is strip assembly C. This is strip assembly B. And this is strip assembly A. So now I need to subcut strip assembly A. Whoops, I didn't do that right. I need to start with my zero. All right, so I'm gonna cut my zero, and then subcut, subcut. Now, strip assembly B. We are going to do the same thing to it that we did to strip assembly A. So let's line it up on the table. So I have my first three. Then I'll do just like I did with strip assembly A. We have two strip assembly C's, but I am still going to just cut one time because I'm going to layer them one on top of the other. I'm not laying the seams on top of the seams. I'm staggering them. So then it's easier to cut. And I need eight of these. So you're gonna have some leftover. Our strip assemblies are done. So this, these, are the subcuts from strip assembly A. And we'll use these to make block A. I call do over. <laughs> this, <laughs> in fact, is the result of subcutting strip assembly A. Anyway. <laughs> so here is unit A. Now I want to put this rectangle, which is fabric three, on one side of unit A. And then I want to put the skinny strip of fabric three, which is this one, on the other side of unit A. I am going to go ahead and chain piece 
these guys together, and then I will add the skinny strip. Here is block A, and I have eight of those. So now we are on block B assembly. We're going to take our skinny strips of fabric one. We're going to take strip assembly B, and we're going to sew those together. And then we are going to take our rectangle cuts of fabric one, and we're going to sew that to the right-hand side of this and this. So I'm gonna take these to the sewing machine and I will be back. And here is block B. Now we need to work on block C. So we're going to take strip assembly C, which is this. So we're gonna put fabric two on either side of strip assembly C, and that will make block C. And here is block C. Now let's go to the wall and arrange them. Now don't go anywhere, stay right here. And if you like this video so far, please subscribe. So there it is. Now I'm gonna compare it to what the book looks like. So you can kind of see here is block C, and then here is block B. <laughs> I've already forgotten. That's block A. And here, yeah, so I think I got it right. And this is the perfect time to give some shout outs to my friends and some of the people who stay in touch with me. Thank you, Trucker Janie, for all the beautiful inspirational quilts that you send me pictures of. You get so much done, and every time I see them, it just inspires me to go make another quilt. Thank you for keeping in touch and showing me your projects. Thank you, Leah, for the coffee. I need the caffeine. Jonna, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you for all the different ways that you have thought of to cut up a nine patch. <laughs> they're, they're great. Keep the good ideas coming. As you can see, well, and maybe you can't, I've put these two rows together, these two rows together, and these two rows together. <laughs> <laughs> so I was editing this video. I did not put them in order correctly on my design wall. My quilt top is complete. This is the third time that I've shot the ending for this video and that has just been how this video has gone. I want to thank Fabric Cafe for sending me this wonderful book. This quilt was fun to put together. There is one mistake so if you can find it let me know what it is and I'll step back. So make sure you get a, a good look. For some reason, when I put the quilt up on the design wall, it looked like this. No, it didn't because this one's upside down. <laughs> oh my goodness, and I'm not flipping it over. <laughs> this is right, but it's upside down. <laughs> oh my goodness, this has been like an April Fool's month for this video. <laughs> anyway, it looked like this, but flip it over. 
between here and the sewing machine. And it is not that far. A and B blocks got switched to B and A. I don't know what happened, but anyway, that seam ripper, hold on. This little guy was a lifesaver. It sits in a drawer, I've used it before. I don't know why I don't use it more often. It made quick work of taking every single block apart. And you know what? The reason I did it was because I wanted the quilt to look like what it was supposed to look like. So, other than being upside down, it looks like what it's supposed to look like. Leah, thank you so much for the coffee. Have a great day, eat some chocolate, and be kind to everyone. Until next time, bye. This is what happens to a home-based quilter. Dogs bark. <laughs>